Hi and welcome to our next podcast on medical statistics. This time we're going to be talking about confidence intervals. Okay, so let's start by thinking about what confidence intervals are. And we're going to use uh, the same example that we've used for the past few podcasts, that of serum sodium levels. We know that in the healthy population, serum sodium levels are distributed normally, that the mean is 140 millimoles per meter per litre, and the standard deviation is 3. So we know that if we uh, pick a sample of size 9 from uh, the population of healthy individuals, work out their serum sodium levels, and then take the mean of it, uh, if you think back, we know what this distribution looks like. We talked about the, um, the distribution of the sample mean and we learned that it too was a normal distribution, um, that it has the same mean as the parent population, so the mean would be 140, um, and we know how to work out the standard deviation, or what we call the standard error in this case, and the standard error in this case would be 1. And that's represented by this blue curve, which is a bit narrower than the curve that we had for, this, for the whole population. So what does that mean? Well, if we continually took samples of size 9 and kept on taking samples of size 9 and working out uh, the mean sodium for these 9 individuals, then we'd get lots of different values each time we did it, because these are random samples, uh, but they would cluster around a mean of 140 and they'd have a standard error, standard deviation of 1. So it might look something like this if we continued to, to sample and sample again. So as you can see, uh, these values are all clustering, ar clustering around uh, our mean, which we know is 140. Now, under each of these st sample means, I'm going to draw a line or an interval, which extends from two standard errors to the left of it to two standard errors to the right of it. So here we go. There's the first one. So that double-headed arrow, like I say, is just a, a line or a range of numbers. Uh, and the, the left of those arrowheads is two standard errors to the left of, of that value, and the right arrowhead is two standard errors to the right of the value. And we could draw that under each of these, uh, each of these samples. It would look something like this. Here we go. Uh, so how many of these lines, how many of these intervals, um, include the value 140? Well, we know that um, in, in our normal distribution, 95% of our sample means lie within two standard errors of 140. So that means that 95% of these intervals that we've drawn will include 140. There they are. So what is a confidence interval then? Well, it's, a, it's an interval which estimates a population parameter. Um, and we know that a 95% confidence interval includes the population parameter with a probability of 0.95. And equivalently, uh, say a 90% confidence interval would include the population parameter with a probability of 0.9. And generalizing that, an X% percent confidence interval would include the population parameter with a probability of 0.X. So let's look at an example, and we're going to look at the example of sodium bind yet again. So suppose you take uh, 20 individuals at random from those taking sodium bind. You work out the serum sodium levels and then you take the average. And then because you know a bit about the distribution, you're able to work out a confidence interval for this. And so you end up quoting that uh, the mean sodium level was 137 and the confidence interval was 135 to 139. Well, what does that really tell us? Or to flip it around, suppose you're reading a paper and you see this value and its confidence interval quoted. Well, what what can that tell you? Well, uh, to begin with, it gives you immediately an idea as to what the distribution looks like. You know that it's clustered around 137, and you know that the standard error is 1. We know that there's a 95% probability that the population value lies within this interval. And in this case, the population value is the average serum sodium level in all individuals taking sodium bind. And so we know that there's at least a 95% probability that the population value is less than 139. And so there's, again, at least a 95% probability that the population level is less than 140. 
Now, suppose we're doing a hypothesis test and our experimental hypothesis is that um, average serum sodium levels in those taking sodium bind is less than those in the general population. Then I hope you'll be able to convince yourself that the probability of getting a result of 137 under the null hypothesis is less than 0 0.05. That is to say the p-value is less than 0 0.05. So uh, we can learn a lot just from this one value and its confidence interval. So there's an example of some of the uh, richness you can glean from seeing a, a value in its confidence interval. And I want to focus now um, on an example of how I think we shouldn't really be reading confidence intervals. Surgeons love p-values, and I think one of the reasons that we uh, love them are that they um, make things black and white. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then we have hit hit gold, hit a statistically significant result, whereas if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, unfortunately the result that we have uh, found tells us nothing, or at least that's the way we're tempted to think. Um, so I want to look at two examples. Suppose you're reading a paper and you read the statement, we found that treatment X improved survival by three months. 95% confidence interval runs from not minus 0 0.1 to 6.1. Now, you might be tempted to look at that and say, uh, now the confidence interval crosses zero, and therefore the result is not statistically significant. Now, it's certainly true to say that the p-value for this would be greater than 0 0.05. Um, however, if that's all we get from this confidence interval, then we've missed all of that information that we talked about on the last slide. And again, so look at the, the second uh, statement there. Another study that you're reading says the relative risk for smokers was found to be uh, 2.1. And then you look and you see the 95% confidence interval runs from 1.1 to 3.8. And you say, ah, well, because this confidence interval does not include unity, does not include 1, then that's telling me that the p-value is less than 0 0.05. So this this is a significant result. And again, you're right, the p-value here would be less than 0 0.05, uh, but what you need to think there is about what does the underlying distribution looks like, look like, um, and what does a, a relative risk of 2.1 really mean in this context. Um, so uh, what I'm trying to say, I guess, is, uh, is to try and warn against simply using confidence intervals as a surrogate for p-values. Because whilst they give us an idea as to p-values, they tell us much, much more as well. So let me use this uh, made-up example to hopefully make my point a bit more clear. Um, let's suppose that there was uh, there are two chemotherapy drugs, X and Y, uh, which are being tried as neoadjuvant treatment for cancer Z. Somebody has uh, designed uh, a good three-armed, randomised, or blinded placebo-controlled trial and comes up with the results below. So drug X is found to have an overall survival benefit of one month, and this survival benefit is sig statistically significant, so the p-value is less than 0 0.05. However, drug Y um, is found to, be, to have no statistically significant effect. Whilst the overall survival benefit is shown to be 13 months, the p-value is 0 0.01. Uh, so if we are tempted just to look at p-values, then we'd say, well, X is the drug that we should be going for um, because we've found that there is a statistically significant um, benefit in survival. However, we've not really found much at all about the drug Y. Um, whereas, clearly, when you look at these numbers, uh, you should be thinking, well, maybe if we, if we run a larger trial or if we look a bit more carefully at how we uh, try these drugs, then Y may turn out to be by far the better drug. Um, but if we just dichotomize, if we just look at p-values, then we lose some of the nuances about what's going on here. Okay, so to summarize, uh, we have defined what a confidence interval is. Uh, I hope we've explained what a confidence interval means. And we have looked at some of the pros and cons, some of the limitations and benefits of the p-value. Um, compared with the confidence interval.